Believe it or not, fractions, decimals and percentages are all related. If I represent a number in the form of a decimal, say 0.25, the same number can be represented as both a fraction or a percentage. Understanding the relationship between fractions, decimals and percentages and knowing how to convert between them is really important. In this video, I'll demonstrate some strategies to help you with just that. Remember, this video is designed to be a review, which means it's designed to be a refresher rather than a detailed breakdown. So let's begin. Let's begin by considering the following circle. We can represent the shaded part of this circle as a fraction, where we've got one equal portion of the circle shaded out of the four equal portions of the circle there is total. As of percentage, we consider the entire circle to be 100% of the circle. The 25% represents the shaded portion that we have. As a decimal, it's very similar. We consider the entire circle to be one whole portion of it, and we've got 0.25 of the portion shaded. That's all well and good, but how do we mathematically convert between these three values? Well, let's start by talking about percentages. The word percent means per hundred, or for every hundred. We can use this to help remember that to convert a percentage to a decimal, we need to divide by 100. If we take our 25% and divide by 100, what we need to do is take the decimal place that exists here and move it to the left the same number of zeros that follow my one. So 2, and we find that our answer is 0.25, which is what we're looking for. To move from decimals to percentages, we need to do the opposite of what we just did. So rather than divide by 100, we need to multiply by 100. If we take our 0.25 and multiply by 100, we need to move this decimal place two spots to the right this time because we're multiplying. In this case, it will get us back to our 25% value that we're looking for. Next, let's consider converting a percentage to a fraction. To convert a percentage to a fraction, we use the definition of percentage, or per 100, to remind us that we need to divide by 100. So we take the percentage value, we divide by 100. You'll notice that I've represented this as a fraction. Just remember, that fraction line is the same as saying divide. So if we take the 25 and divide by 100, we now have this percentage represented as a fraction. However, with fractions, we always simplify. So we look for the biggest number that divides into both the numerator and the denominator. In this case, it's 25. So we need to divide by 25 over 25. It's the same as dividing by 1, so we're allowed to do it. In this case, 25 goes into 25 once, goes into 100 four times, and we've got our fraction. So remember, we take the percentage, divide by 100, and then we simplify. It's a really important step. Now we've got our fraction, what if we had this and we need to go back to a percentage? Well, we do the opposite of what we just did. Last time we divided by 100, so this time we need to take our fraction, or the numerator over the denominator, and multiply by 100. Now to do this, we've got 1 over 4, we multiply by 100, now I want to represent 100 as a fraction here, so that's 100 over 1, which means I need to times the tops together, which will be 100, the bottoms together, which will be 4, and I've got myself a percentage. You'll notice that I've got this percentage as a fraction at the moment. We always simplify. 100 divided by 4 goes perfectly 25 times, so our answer is 25%. Next, let's look at converting this fraction here to the decimal. To do this, we simply take the numerator and divide it by its denominator. To do this by hand, we need to take the denominator of 4 and divide it into the numerator of 1. Now, we start this by going, how many times does 4 go into 1? Well, it doesn't, so we put a 0 here. Put the decimal place where it should go and extend this. 
How many times does 4 go into 10? Well, it goes twice, with a remainder of 2. So we carry that remainder to the next decimal place. How many times does 4 go into 20? Well, it goes 5 times. And now, found the answer. The answer is 0 0.25. Finally, we've got a, this decimal here to convert back to a fraction. Now we could convert it first to a percentage and then convert it to a fraction and that would work. However, there's a little mathematical shortcut that can help us uh, convert decimals directly to fractions. Now let's just consider the decimal place 0 0.25 for a moment. It's made up of a tenths column in here and a hundredths column just in here. Now, if we wanted to solve this and get them to a fraction, that's the same as saying we've got two lots of one tenths, or two over 10, plus our five lots of a hundredths, or five over 100. Now we've got a fraction problem. To add fractions together, we need a common denominator. Common denominator here is gonna be 100. So we need to put each fraction so it's over 100. Now, the 5 over 100 stays as 5 over 100. To get the 10 to 100, we need to multiply by 10. So we've got to multiply the 2 by 10 to be able to get that down to the numerator spot. 2 times 10 is 20, so now we've got 20 over 100 plus 5 over 100. That will equal 25 over 100. From here, we just need to simplify it. 25 is the largest number that can go into both. So we divide by 25 over 25. We'll find that that will equal 1 over 4, which is the fraction that we're looking for. Now this is a tedious process, particularly if you have more than just the two decimal places that we have in this problem. But there is a neat shortcut. If we begin by identifying the last place value that exists, in this case it's 1 over 100, you'll notice that its denominator is the same as the denominator that we found down here. The second thing you'll notice is that if you consider the numbers after this decimal place, the two and the five, that became our numerator that we have here. So what we need to do is take this denominator, put it at the bottom, take the values after the decimal place and let it be our numerator. And we've shortcutted our process directly to here. From that point, you just need to simplify. We just need to be mindful that if there is a whole number that exists in front of the decimal place, that we need to put that whole number in front here. But I'll talk about that shortly. So just to revise how to convert a decimal to a fraction, we start by identifying the last place values denominator, and that becomes our denominator here. Our numerator will be all the digits that are after the decimal place, or to the right of the decimal place. This little box that I've got in front of here is for the whole number that might be on the left of the decimal place if it is not zero. Once we've got this, we just need to remember to simplify the problem. So now I've given you an overview of how to convert these, let's give a bit of a trickier problem a go. In this case, I've been given the decimal 1.375 and been asked to convert them. Let's begin by converting it to a percentage by multiplying the 1.375 by 100. In this case, I need to move the decimal place two spots to the right. So our final answer will be 137.5%. If we want to convert this percentage back to the decimal, we need to take the 137.5% and divide by 100. To divide by 100, we need to move the decimal place back two places, which will mean that our answer is 1.375, which is what we had to begin with. Now we've got our percentage of 137.5%, let's convert it to a fraction by taking the percentage of 137.5 and dividing it by 100. Now you'll immediately notice now that I've got a decimal in my fraction. I wanna remove that if I can. So, to do that, I need to somehow move this decimal place one to the right. I can do that by multiplying by 10. However, if I only multiply the top by 10, I've changed the fraction. So I need to multiply by 10 over 10, and that'll effectively move the decimal place once on both the top and the bottom, which will create our numerator of 1,375 and our denominator of 1,000.
Our next step is to simplify by finding the highest common factor. Now I know that the highest common factor that will fit between these will be 125 over 125. 125 goes into 1,375 11 times, and it goes into 1,000 eight times. So our fraction will be 11 over eight. Now this is an improper fraction. We can also answer this as a mixed fraction by looking at how many times does eight go into 11, which is one, and we've got three remainder over our eight. Both answers are perfectly acceptable. Next, let's take our improper fraction here of 11 over eight and convert it to our decimal. We do this by dividing our eight into our 11 here. Now I'm gonna give an extra couple of decimal places because I know that I'm gonna need them. Eight doesn't go into one, so we leave that. It does go into 11 once and we carry over the three. It goes into 30 three times and we carry over the six. It goes into 60 seven times and we carry over the four, and it goes into 40 perfectly five times. You'll notice that we've got our final answer of 1.375, which is back to where we started. Finally, let's convert the decimal back into a fraction. We start by identifying the last place value. We know that this one is tenths, we know that this one is one over 100, and we know that this one here is a thousandths, so our last place value is one over 1,000. So when we do this, our denominator is gonna be 1,000. The numbers after the decimal place is 375. That becomes our numerator. And in this case, we've got a whole number before the decimal place. We put that whole number at the front here. Remember, we need to simplify this fraction that we've just created. Well, I know that 125 divides into both of these numbers. So I'm gonna divide this by 125 over 125. 125 goes into 375 three times. It goes into 1,000 eight times, and I've still got this whole number that I need to have at the front. I've now successfully converted this into a mixed fraction. I can convert it to an improper fraction if I wish, but I don't have to. So that gives you a review of how to convert fractions, percentages, and decimals between each other. This chart here can be useful to remind you of the process along with some example problems. What I would like you to do now is to practice some problems for yourself. I hope that you found this review to be quite helpful and thank you for watching.